Hello everyone and welcome to a Twin Stitches Designs podcast. My name is Julie and I am the knitwear designer behind Twin Stitches Designs. Today we are Wednesday. Uh, I think it's like June 16th. I think so. And it is just about 12 o'clock. My husband went on lunch and he's taking care of the girls. And um, I am here with you guys podcasting. I hope that you are well wherever you are in the world, and I am just so happy as always to be coming back to you guys. It's been just about two weeks since the last podcast, and I have, as always, so much to share. Um, Things have been going really good, but they've been very busy. I've been doing a lot of knitting tutorials, so definitely check out the YouTube channel um, for all new tutorials being uploaded. Um, I'm just having so much fun doing all of those for you. I am just knitting at the same time we're chatting today because I'm trying to get some progress done on my sweater that I'm going to share all the details with you later, but I'm trying to sneak in rows here and there whenever I can. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Julianne Knitter, and I will link everything I talk about down below this video. If you have any questions, please list them down below, and I will try to answer them as soon as I possibly can. Wow, you guys. It has been... Like I mentioned, two weeks since the last podcast, um, I have a finished object. I have a pattern released coming out tomorrow, um, which is going to be Thursday, June 17th. Like we have a packed full episode. So grab your beverage of choice, grab your knitting, crocheting, makes whatever you're doing and let's dive right in. First up, we are going to go through finished objects. I finished, uh, it wasn't even cast on on the last podcast, but I finished my worsted weight socks out of We Are Knitters. Um, and the second one's just right here. I had, uh, knit about one and a half for our one week sock cow. This was a challenge that I did over on Instagram and I was able to knit the full pair of the, um, the men's for my husband but I sadly did not finish two full pairs of socks. So I decided, oh, there's a little fluff on here. Uh, I knit these for myself. This is out of We Are Knitters in their Murray Fine yarn, which is absolutely beautiful. Really love it. And this is 100% Barina wool, 123 yards per 50 grams. So for my size, I used two balls. For my husband, I also used two balls. Um, but depending on your husband's size of feet and the long leg, I potentially would grab three. I barely had any left. Like it was really, really minimum. I want to say like maybe five grams each ball, like maybe 10 grams left out of the hundred. So definitely, um, if you don't want to cut it close, grab three balls of that and you'll get a really nice pair of socks. So this pattern is going to be released tomorrow and I'm calling this my perfect worsted weight socks. It is a plain vanilla sock, but you will have the recipe for four adult sizes. Um, and it will be on say, um, going on for $5 Canadian. Just because there's no pattern, I didn't want to put like that extra $2 that I usually do, but you will have five different, uh, sorry. Um, so yes, you will have four different adult sizes. It is all with a heel flap and gusset, um, and then just a fun toe. It is all magic loop cuff down. So this is gonna be available tomorrow, Thursday, Uh, June 17th up in my Ravelry shop and potentially Lovecraft if I can get it up in time. So I knit a sample out of the gray for my husband and this one is in the colorway Bordeaux, um, both out of the Murray Fine. Now I do know that Murray Fine is 100% wool. I'm not sure if I had mentioned it on the last podcast. Um, 100% wool socks does not contain any nylon. These are meant to be some house socks. So when we go cuddle up on the couch or if it's really cold outside, I live in East Coast Canada, New Brunswick, it gets really cold during the winter. So I think that these will be perfect when I we are cold and you just wanna snuggle up um, after going to play outside in the snow. This is not something that's gonna be in boots or Um, going around too much. They will be in our slippers. So I am not scared of that. Also, 
With 100% wool, it is okay to knit some socks. You don't desperately need nylon. You want to look at the twist of the yarn. Put this aside. So depending on the twist of the yarn, if it's very spun, um, you can see it here, how high twist it is. That really helps with the durability of the yarn. Now, if it's a loose ply, um, that there's no twist to it, then it's going to either felt very easy or get holes faster. So I'm very curious to see how it's going to knit up, how long it's going to last. But I do think that it's going to be really good because you see the, the twist from just the ball of yarn. So I think that this is going to be great. Um, and they're not baggy socks. They're very nice fitting. So I'm really excited about this. And I hope that you guys, um, like this pattern. I'm going to be making up a DK weight pair of socks very soon. I'm just waiting for yarn in the mail from Laura. So I will have a basic sock recipe for toe up and cuff down with fingering weight. I will have a basic worsted weight sock pattern, and then I'm going to have a basic DK weight sock pattern. So depending on, and these are tech edited and they're very good patterns. So just for $5, you get the full recipe. And I'm just very, very, very excited to be offering these um, in my shop. I think that this is something fun and it's great. So depending on the yarn that you have, because not everybody wants to knit fingering weight socks. So I think that this is a great alternative. Um, and then the DK weight will be coming out um, soon-ish whenever I get the yarn and knit those out. So yes. Uh, the sock blockers, I always have questions. They, I purchased them on Etsy a few years ago, and sadly, they do not sell them anymore. Um, you do not need sock blockers to knit some socks. They are just kind of, you know, they, they frame the sock so that they look really nice. But, um, so they look like that. I haven't wet blocked these yet. I literally just put them on the sock blocker and they automatically took the shape. A sock blocker really is just for photos or if you're gifting to somebody and you really want that shape, but socks will automatically block on your feet. So you don't need these. They're just really cute aesthetic photos, that kind of deal. And I was um, having them in my little cedar box from Knit Picks, which by the way, Knit Picks is having their summer sale going on right now. And uh, these little cedar boxes are 10% off. So I just had these in here. Um, absolutely love it. So this little cedar box is amazing. They have a small, medium, and large. I'll put my affiliate link down below if you guys want to grab it, but they're 10% off. I love these for socks and I love the large one for sweaters. They're just amazing. And I'm actually going to show off um, another finished object in a minute. So yes, I just have these in there and then I am hoping to fill this little box with all worsted to DK weight socks. Really comfy, cozy socks for the fall. All right, so that is it for that one. The next finished object I have not showed on a while is my dishcloth knitting. Now I have been doing some dishcloth knitting again with the cedar boxes and I am hosting a year long knit along called Dishy Dimanche. I've not mentioned it because I've not been knitting on them too much, but it is a fun year long knit along both over on Instagram and Ravelry group. All you have to do is just use the hashtag Dishy Dimanche. I'm going to have the details down below. I also have a fun YouTube video that shares all the details. I will link that below as well. Each quarter I pull some prizes both from Instagram and the Ravelry thread and send those off. It's really just knitting up dishcloths, using up um, different cotton yarns. It does not have to be knit picks. It can be any yarn, any pattern, any fun. My goal this year was to knit one dishcloth every week so that I would end the year with 52 dishcloths, as well as using my stash of dishcloths, which is a little ridiculous, but I love it. So this week I focused on knitting some dishcloths and actually finished um, three of them. So I am now up to 13 dishcloths out of 52. And look how pretty they are. Look at it. Like it is so tight in here that they're not even falling. They're just like all cozy and amazing. So this one is Kitchenette by Knit Picks. These are all Knit Picks dishy. So this is the Kitchenette and the dishy multi. This one is Creme Brulee and the dishy solid. Let's see if I can remember them all. This one is Sunshine in the dishy multi. 
this one I just started. I don't think I looked at the name. And this one is Kenne, and they're solid. Kenye, Kenne, not 100% sure. If I've butchered those, I'll put them down below. So I am at 13. I'm doing the same same pattern for all of these I am just using grandma's favorite dishcloth by vintage the only thing that I'm modifying these for is I'm doing a knit front and back instead of a yarn over so that there's no holes going around I am using a US 8 for all of my dishcloths and either doing up to 42 uh, 42 or 44 stitches. Now, if ever your dishcloths are look like wonky after you're done, just stretch them out a little bit, kind of straighten them out. They're never really perfect. Even what I do is I fold them down and kind of stretch, fold them back, and just tug on them until they look like a cute little square. But dishcloths, you guys, are not meant to be like absolutely perfect because they are just going to be shoved in, um, whatever and used. So what I am currently doing is I am using up every single ounce of dishy so that I'm not having any wasted. Now when I finished this creme brulee, I had half of the sunshine. So I used up all the creme brulee and then did the sunshine. Oh, and I should also mention all my ends are woven in. I feel I feel pretty good. <laughs> So then I was able to get three full sunshines. And I think this was like the biggest one for some odd reason. I was also able to get another half and then I started this color. So my next color is going to be this one that I'm gonna put the name right here. Um, and I will continue this until I need to add another color and that's what I'm currently doing. So odds are that I am going to be keeping um, kind of these little mismatched for myself and gifting like gifting the perfect ones to other people so I'll have like that one this one um, so you see this one I finished off kitchenette and just needed a little extra so I used up the creme brulee that's really all that it is so that you're able to really use up every single last scrap of dishcloth I don't want to waste anything and really want to I don't mind. I don't mind that my dishcloths aren't going to match and there's a little color. It doesn't matter to me. It really doesn't. And I know that for some recipients that I'm going to be giving these to, it won't matter to them either. I know that my mom absolutely loves this yellow. I was knitting on some dishcloths when I went to go see her and she's like, I want that yellow. And I'm like, okay. My mom will happily, happily take some dishcloths and I know that she won't mind if they're, um, if there's some that aren't absolutely perfect. So, I'll be giving, I'll be giving some to her and other people. So my Christmas knitting is going to be done very early. But yes, I wanted to share all that with you. So this is my update on my dishcloth knitting. And right now they're just in here. Um, I'm going to grab some more cedar boxes and put them just because I think they're so pretty. And for now, I'm going to continue on with the same pattern. It's intuitive. It is mindless for me. I just cast on. I know exactly. And I love it. I haven't cast on another. Sorry if you can hear my kids, they're playing outside. Um, I just finished this one last night and I'm taking a little break to work on the sweat on my husband's sweater. And then I will get back to this um, this week. I always want to have some on the needles. I also love um, walking on the treadmill and knitting at the same time. Yes, I managed to do it. It takes a lot of practice, but I've managed it. So I always have uh, my dishcloth knitting on my treadmill. So if I'm walking for 20, 25 minutes, whatever it is, it at least helps um, get those dishcloths done because I need to catch up. I think we're at week like 24 of the year and I have 13 done. So I'm behind, but if I do like two every week, I should be good for a while. I actually just went to go grab it. This is the yarn that I am doing up next and it's called Dandelion Patch in their multi. Really beautiful. Um, I think I'm gonna be going into the greens after. I love doing like one full color family. I still have some yellow, but I think I need to switch it up. 
um, so that I'm going to go in the greens and then probably go from greens to blues. So then if I want to do like some gifts that I at least have like full color families and I'm not just like bouncing around different colors because from the yellows, I could do like two to three different colors of the yellow for one person and have a lot of dishcloths. So that is uh, my plan. It is not cast on yet. I just put it in my bag and uh, just waits for me to cast it on. This is a bag that I purchased um, last year from the Tangle Stitch Shop. She's a Canadian bag maker. And I love that they just drawstring. So I usually just hook it on my treadmill and I can knit so that I'm not even like holding the yarn or anything like that. Okay, um, that is it for the finished objects. Now we're gonna go into some whips. Now the only thing that I had cast on from the last time is the sweater that I am test knitting for Vincent of Design by Dells. Now I mentioned to you guys that I wanted to split for the sleeves the last time that I recorded and I did and I'm a little bit even further. So I, I love it, but it's ginormous. Um, it is so beautiful. I'm knitting this out of Knit Pick Stroll Tweed and uh, the top one is North Sea Heather. The white one is Dalmatian and I'm currently doing a Prussian Heather. I've split for the sleeves and now I'm starting the little marling effect. So this is what I was knitting on a few seconds ago. You marl the main the first color with the second color do the second color then marl the third the second with the third and then I'm going to continue on with um, the darker blue so my goal today I think I have I have six five to six more rows of marling before I can do just the color. So today my goal is to get the marling done so that I can just go on to the uh, to the last color. Um, and every day I'm planning on picking this up, doing a few rows so that it's not as daunting. Um, I don't want to just work on this for a few days. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do is in the mornings pick this up for half hour, hour, whatever it is get at least a few rows in every single day and it'll just gradually grow and I don't feel like oh my gosh this is taking forever so that I at least have to knit a row a day. I think he is going to live in this. I've knit a sweater out of Knit Pick Stroll Tweet a few years ago and it holds up and knits up beautifully. Whew, that blows out my face. Um, so yes, I am knitting this on my Knit Picks Prism Interchangeable Needle on a US 8. He uses a US 6, but to get um, the gauge is a US 8 for me. And I'm just really loving it from here and there. And um, I just can't stop holding it up because I'm so proud of it. It's my first garment for my husband, um, which means I'm super nervous about it. He tried it on and it fits, thank God. Um, I couldn't have imagined doing all of that work and then it wasn't fitting. I think I would have had, I think I would have just flipped and started crying right there, but it fits some. So I'm just going to keep on knitting. I want to say that I have uh, probably like 15, 14 to 15 more inches to go for the body. This is a beast. Um, so that's why I want to pick it up every single day and today just at least finish that marling. Um, and then feel like, okay, I have that much done. I only have this many more inches to go. It'd be great if I could do one inch to two inches a day, but that might be a little, um, pushing it a little bit, but I'm even debating doing the sleeves two at a time. We'll see. I do actually want to get up a tutorial for sleeves two at a time. No, that it was requested, but I might actually do that one with the next sweater that I have on my needles. Um, so yeah, you guys, I am so proud of myself. I might even live in this sweater. It is so amazing. Stroll tweed. I just love it. So, and I think these colors look awesome together. I can't wait to see it done. I just love it. So I think that's it. There's no bag because it is so big. I do need to get myself like a lard sweater bag. It's actually something I don't have. If you have any of your favorite bag makers that make like a large sweater bag, um, put them down below. I don't want a tall, I want more of like a wider. Yeah. 
let me know down below um, your favorite bag makers and I eventually need to invest in a nice big larger sweater bag for these projects because right now it's just all over my house okay next up on whips I teased about a new sweater cast on and I did so I had done a full haul video on Hobie's yarn and I had absolutely loved this combination the girls love yellow and I've been wanting to knit them more sweaters for me I'm not knitting a ton of sweaters because I'm not wearing them I'm either wearing gym clothes or my pajamas let's all be honest I am just stuck at home so I'm not really wearing too too much fancier clothes and the girls just love knitted items so I decided to pair this unicorn solid which is in the colorway 19 which is lemon and with this speckle which is colorway 2 not 100% sure on the actual name but it's color number 2 now they have a huge sale on their s solids right now their speckles are sold out but they are going to be hopefully getting them by the end of June so if you are interested definitely keep an eye out for that I really wanted yellow to be the focus because the girls are obsessed with yellow so I decided just to kind of cast on a little sweater making this up as I go no joke in one night I had cast on done the ribbing and almost at the sleeve separation in one night I mean these sweaters go by so fast it looks tiny I, they've tried them on it's like it stretches um they tried it on and it fits perfectly so I just just added um the pink right now my bag looks like a crazy mess because I have four balls of yarn I am holding the fingering weight double and I am using is that I'm using a US 10 with fingering weight held double so it's a nice loose fabric I'm just really having fun with it so that's why it flew off of my needles if you guys are interested um, I might write up the pattern I'm thinking that I'm gonna be doing some stripes on the body or color blocking if you guys have a preference on color blocking or stripes let me know below I'm debating color blocking I was planning on stripes but color blocking right now seems a pretty good idea when I'm looking at my bag and I have four different balls of yarn going crazy in there so I may just do a fun color block and then finish the sleeves in the yellow and then maybe do like the cuffs in the color block not sure we'll see we'll see what sorry I was interrupted by some little ones but yes definitely let me know down below what you guys think I should do um, I'm really gearing towards the color block where I think I'm gonna do this one for the body and then I will do everything here for the sleeves and then if I don't have enough then I'll finish like the cuffs in this and also let me know if you guys would be interested in a little pattern so I'm really excited about that my next project is in a project bag by Daisy Girl Company who is Sherry I absolutely love her peekaboo bags they're a lot of fun and just super cute that you see your project and this is a brand new cast on that you guys have not seen I have been dying to cast on Nicole's yarn Nicole is from Nicole C Mendez she is a um, German dyer who creates the most beautiful self striping yarn and she is such a sweet friend of mine she sent me this yarn oh it took me everything when it arrived not to cast it on right away but I knew I needed the perfect moment so this is in her Daphne colorway on her soft sock which is a 80 20 blend 437 yards love her tag and here is the yarn love the purples and blues and creams and gray and it knits even up like if possible it's even more beautiful knit up I I couldn't stop knitting this when I cast it on so this was supposed to be my sock that I would time myself to see how long it was going to take me to knit up a pair of socks because I never timed myself and I was super curious to see but the problem was my shoulder let go and I had to go to physio so I was knitting way slower than I usually do so I originally cast on and started but I was noticing there was I had a lot of pain in my shoulder so I'm gonna finish this sock and then when I cast on the second sock then I will time myself um, to see how the second one and Nicole's knitting along with me and we're chatting and it's a, just a lot of fun so um, these are stitch markers that do up every 10 rounds a lot of people do this for their socks and don't count inches so I was curious and thought well why not so I did 55 rounds 
Um, I did 10 rounds of two by two ribbing, cast on 56 stitches on a 2.5 millimeter needle. These are knit picks, uh, nickel plated. And then I just used a fun scrap that I had for the heel and I did it in garter. So all that means is instead of knit and purl, you just knit every row and it creates a fun um, garter squishy squishy thing. So this has been put in a tiny timeout while I focused on some dishcloth knitting as well as the sweater, but I cannot wait to get back to this. Nicole completely beat me and she already finished one sock. Um, she's such a speedy knitter, I think. Uh, Nicole, I think your time was four and a half hours. So you guys, you guys are, you guys are good. I don't know if I can finish a full sock in four and a half hours. But I'm very curious to try on the second sock because this one, like I mentioned, it just completely bummed me out that my shoulder was acting up and I had to go to physio a few times, get it taped up and just... So second sock, going to be timing myself. And I I don't think I can... I think I'm going to be around five hours. I don't think four, four and a half is fast. So yeah, so this one is just going to be for that fun vanilla knitting. Um, for me, my time that can be the most calm will be at night when the girls are sleeping. In the morning, just too many things can happen. So at night, I can just push um, timer and watch Gilmore Girls and just relax and knit. So that is definitely that one. That is it for everything that I've been working on. Um, I am going to be, I pulled up two different things to share with you all. So I want to make some scrappy socks for my husband and I got him to go in my stash and to pull up a bunch of minis. So I just have a bunch of random minis. I share this in my Patreon vlog um, in more details, and I'll share a lot more detail when I cast it on, but he just, I told him just pick like 10 or 12 minis um, that you like, and I will knit up a pair of scrappy socks. I'm just super excited to get it cast on. I don't know the names of these yarns. I just know that 90% of them are from Jill. Um, we did an Avent swap two years in a row, so a lot of them were from her. So I have these all in my um, creative knitter bag, who's Stephanie, and just waiting for me to start winding them up here and there. So once I get a few things off of my needles, this is going to be um, my next project that I'm really excited about. I'm also thinking of writing up the full recipe and then um, kind of having a pattern for that. And uh, yeah, so I am just so super excited. The next one that I'm wanting to cast on that I have not yet is um, an acquisition from the... No, it was not from the last time. No, I've had this one for a while. Um, I've been wanting to net up some of my homespun house yarn. So this is Molly's yarn. And this is on her soft sock. It's Friday I'm in Love, which is a 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend, 470 yards per 100 grams. And... I caked it up. I am thinking of holding uh, this fingering weight double to kind of create like a DK weight sock and think that it would just be so much fun. So I caked it up and then divided it in half. So these are both 50 grams of yarn. So this is to be a cast on in the future. I just wanted to have it ready um, in the bag. This is also Molly's little drawstring bag and just ready to go whenever I have the chance to cast this on. So that's it for everything I've been working on, but I do have a few acquisitions that I would love to share with you all. Um, continuing on the Molly <laughs> train, I did purchase um, her You Showed Me color on her Gold Stellina. I love her Gold Stellina because it's not really, like it's not very like sparkle. It's more subtle and you don't see it too much. Really pretty. And, <clears throat> oh, that one came undone. Oh, I'll do that one up again. I bought also her 10 10 gram minis in fingering weight on her soft sock. And this is Walk This Way. So these are 10, 20, uh, 10 10 gram minis and together they make up one full skein. So this will definitely have to become some scrappy socks. I think this fall they look more like autumnal colors. Um, just really love like that one. really beautiful pinks and purples and this is completely my color palette. I love these pinks and burnt yellows and oh, 
I love it. So this is definitely gonna be, have to become a pair of socks and probably, I mean, let's all be honest, they're all becoming socks. <laughs> um, I received another amazing package from Nicole. So this was her last installment of the Bridgerton Club. This one, Eric was like, oh, oh, the, what, what, what's, what's that? I was like, oh, you, you like this one, don't you? He's like, yes. So this is called Simon. Who is the Duke of Hastings? Absolutely love it. Nicole has beautiful colors, just absolutely perfect. So this will probably be my next one. I think after Daphne might have to be Simon, which I mean, I'll have Daphne and he'll have Simon. Oh my God, that's so perfect. I never even realized. All right, I'm getting carried away here, but that's okay. Absolutely love it. Um, also, I got Laura's, uh, I think this was her May um, club month. So she has a colorway of the month every month inspired by um, Greek mythology. And this one was Hera. I have a DK weight of this coming my way already in the mail because I, I couldn't help myself. This is just stunning. Laura really outdid herself with these colors. I'm, I love it so much. Love these like deep blues and I mean, just look at my nails. Um, for anybody wondering, so I have on some fun nail strips and these, you guys look like knitted stitches. It's hard to see. Um, but they look like knitted stitches. This is Artify Nails, and they are a Canadian brand company for nail strips. So it's really just nail polish, but on strips. I will put my affiliate link down below. As well, use Twin Stitches 15 at checkout, and it'll give you 15% off. This, I grabbed two sets of this one because it's knitted stitches. Come on. Like, they need some in all colors. Love it. So yes, I needed to grab this blue. Um, I'm not sure what it's going to be, but it's just going to go in my little, my Laura stash right here. This is some of her, some of her yarn. So definitely get this one. It might still be available in her shop, but I do know that she just came out with her June colorway of the month. So this one, definitely want to get on it before it's gone. I'm not even sure if it's still there, but if it is, grab it now. Beautiful. And the last acquisition that I have is from my amazing friend, Sylvia, from Camellia Fiber Company. Um, Sylvia, I had purchased some yarn from her, and then she was looking for um, some sample slash test knitters for uh, new patterns, so um, I'll show you that. This is one of the skeins that I bought um, on her white tweed. Uh, she was doing a campaign... Um, where some of the proceeds were going for a uh, cause. The, I cannot remember, but anyways, I needed to go to her shop and grab some yarn. So this is, I have never tried. It's called her White Tweed, and this is in the sea foam colorway. So it's 84% merino, 16% cotton Donegal tweed. So this, or Donegal, this is those little cotton, cotton flecks all over. That's what that is. So it's 437 yards, so fingering weight. And I think these are gonna make perfect, gorgeous socks or even a hat, super cute. And then she sent um, some of her Merino Sport for the test knit. So I'm gonna be using her Moonflower, which is a beautiful white. And I'm either gonna be using her Blue Poppy. No. Wait a minute. I'm going to be using chicory, 100%. And I'm not sure if I want to do it with blue poppy or the white. So show them off like this. So I know I want this one and I need a contrast color and I couldn't decide. And she so generously sent me both. She is such a sweet person. So I'm really excited to cast on these. Her sport is like super fluffy. I mean, you can see how squishy it is. All right, you guys, that is it for today's podcast. Thank you so much to everybody who watched till the very end. Um, please click the like and subscribe button so I know that you guys are loving these videos. 
I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you for your love and support for all of my patterns. Do not forget to get on my newsletter so that you don't miss out on any pattern releases. And until next time, you guys, happy knitting.